To not unpodcast them down, steal diplomacy. Hail Metal Nation, it is I, Tim, from Podcast Them Down, but you already knew that, and Burning Shadows, American Power Metal, and uh, joining me is Dave, the drummer of said American Power Metal band and podcast, and uh, we're going to talk about the Burning Shadows release coming out later this week, Steel Diplomacy, official bootleg. Now, this is the third time we're recording this episode (laughs) so (laughs) the first time was with matt and mike uh a few weeks ago and uh they relentlessly made fun of me for the term official bootleg because they just don't fucking get it (laughs) so i mean it's not a difficult concept and it's got historical precedent in music it does I expected that Matthew at least would remember early in the in the 2000s Pearl Jam decided to release every single show on their 2000 world tour. I think there were something like 72 shows that they played that year and they called them official bootlegs. Tim I think you were mentioning wasn't it Dream Theater that did the same thing? Yep, Dream Theater keeps coming out with official bootlegs and no one no one goes, but I mean, it's terrible. <laughs> so right. if, if you want to hear Matt and Mike make fun of me for 45 minutes about it, uh, that episode is on Patreon. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can hear the original episode. Now, I said it's the third time we're recording this episode. We recorded uh, most of an episode on it already. We did. Just to find out that uh, OBS wasn't actually re- uh, capturing the audio. So thank you, OBS. I have not touched any settings, but then it decided to change everything. So thanks. It's the ghost uh, in the machine. Yeah, OBS is uh, what captures everyone's video and audio and puts it together and uh, into one file. <laughs> so... um. Yes, that's what we're using. So, <clears throat> for the third time, Steel Diplomacy, <laughs> official bootleg. The official bootleg. Is two CDs and a Blu ray and a DVD um, of our Steel Diplomacy tour in Europe in 2019. So, it has. Two full sets uh, from the fests, the two fests we played, as well as the uh, some bonus stuff from the other shows we did. Uh, we did Into Battle uh, in Athens, and that's on one CD. And then we did uh, Riddle of Steel in Germany, and that's the other CD. And then... Uh, both of those are on the DVD and Blu-ray. The DVD and Blu-ray are the same thing. We just decided it would be better uh, to give you both, and then you can do whatever you want. You can uh, use one as a coaster. You could you could sell the one you don't want. You could keep them both. You could make yourself a mini poster by just yeah. taking taking out the insert. There you go. <laughs> Now, I've done this with unfolded Burning Shadows inserts before. I've got them in my uh, my poster for excuse me my poster portfolio. Uh, the other yeah. thing you do if you, if you don't need one of the uh, Blu-ray or DVD discs, take it to your local library and uh, donate it to their library uh, bookstore and let some wandering person pick it up on their lunch break. Now I should warn you before the end of this episode. I bet Matt is going to join us. And he might have some choice words for us because he doesn't know I'm, I'm recording this yet. <laughs> I feel like I'm ready for that. Oh, but thanks for the heads up. I didn't know that this was a re-recording. Yeah, I thought this was additional content oh, for the no. uh, well for the cheap seats. Technically, it is additional content because the original recording is going on Patreon. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Yeah, so the uh, official bootleg. Let's let's uh, address that. I knew what it meant, <laughs> you know. I didn't, oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't think it was that hard, but <laughs> what it is is these are our recordings uh, and our videos that I put together 
Uh, they they are not. It's not studio. Uh, it's not a studio release. It's not a um, you know. It's a huge, not even a. It's not a huge like multi camera, multi video camera operator type situation. Uh, it's not you know all multi tracked. Um, but some of it, but not all. Right. So you know the it averages out to a very high quality bootleg. So so like. Uh, what Dream Theater puts out, or I haven't listened to the Pearl Jam one, but <laughs> I mean, I'm the Pearl Jam to. ones there. Uh, yeah. Unless you're a big Pearl Jam fan, there's not a huge reason to um, not, but one of the things that I think is sometimes lost is that that presence and that experience of being there in the room. Like there are so many bands that put out live albums across genres, like metal particularly, but really like pop, everybody does it they're not putting together like actual shows and then releasing them to the public so that you can be like you were there at an iced earth show or at a blind guardian show or at a fill in the blank band that you like they're all they're all doing this and they're going back to the studio and maybe touching it up and adding oh i i uh, an overdub and like well you mentioned iced earth so now i have to talk about this the uh this was all pre-incident, so I, th- mm-hmm. I think we can talk about it. <laughs> the uh, the uh, uh, alive in no, Athens, famously. The- well, oh. oh yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm right, jumping on, back on, one. On. I didn't mention this yeah, on our yeah, first yeah. on our second attempt at this episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> alive in Athens. That's not the set they played. They played like three no. nights and stitched it together. So you can tell if you watch the DVD because like uh, Jimmy McDonald's shirt is on. Now it's off. Now it's on. Now <laughs> yeah. it's off. It's, make up your mind, man. <laughs> and then yeah, festivals of the wicked. That's that was the one I was trying to remember from the Get other back to that one. That, thanks right. for that. So um, yeah. well, let's just go ahead and talk about they uh, they clearly overdubbed the lead guitar, all of it. 100% of it. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh you can tell if you look in I think it's Wolf. It's either Wolf or Pure Evil. <laughs> they uh uh the one guitarist is doing this. <laughs> but like you can't none of the guitars you're hearing are doing that. <laughs> so, and you know, to me at that point it becomes a studio album with some tracks that happen to have been recorded live. Like yeah. <laughs> That so so that's why I'm glad we were able to put this out because uh, as Tim was saying, I think was it Athens that we had the single microphone in the back of the room. Yeah, we didn't. That's address, what it sounded. We like didn't address that on either. this attempt. So the uh, yeah Athens, the Athens show is a field recorder in the back of the room, and uh, came came out surprisingly amazingly great. Uh, I, yeah. I give kudos to the. Um, <laughs> to the uh sound people there um yeah and then riddle of steel was a multi-track that was provided to us by the guy running sound david david de colombo and uh he yeah. runs a studio in italy and uh dave found his mix of our show online and, that's right uh, so I reached out to him and I said, "Hey, can you send that to us? It's, it's I I want this for my collection." And he did. And he also gave us the multi-track. So I remixed it. I didn't want to use his uh his effort for <laughs> our gain. Um but you can you can find his mix, I believe still. So yeah. And it's a good one too. Yeah. It's uh different than That's not how I would have done it. <laughs> But, you know, who's the professional here? Well, he is. I'm not, but I did it differently. <laughs> uh, hey, I, like, I enjoy double mixes. I like hearing two different mixes of the same song. Yeah. Um, so. so definitely uh, get out there on SoundCloud and check them out. Um, But I just love the fact that we were able to put something out that didn't get obsessively overworked after the fact. Um that does still retain that whole spirit and that enthusiasm, like of our first big show in Germany and our first show in Greece ever. Yep. 
like it was a really special moment for us all to be a part of and i think it was captured on these on these recordings yes yeah, so um cameras so we videotaped it all as well so uh all we used were basically just a bunch of gopros yep that uh that conveniently fit in your uh, luggage <laughs> so you can bring a lot of them so it's uh edited down from uh from five five or six cameras most of which are gopros yep. that are just stuck around the stage so um yeah so it's uh so it's interesting it's not just one yeah. angle the whole time but it's not someone pointing to like the action you know no, no one's operating them they're just uh stick them there and, and go <laughs> so yeah well edited the cuts are engaging and make sense with the music and everything like but but yeah you're right there's no crane there's no camera operator with a boom there's no drone shots oh we need to get some drone shots for our next videos yes i agree so <laughs> so does mike have a drone uh, you can. We can let's convince him to get one. <laughs> yeah, so I'll talk. To, I'll talk to Mark too. <laughs> Those boys seem like they have access to drones. Although I didn't think you were going to say drones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, that's why we call it an official bootleg because if we called it live DVD, you'd ex- be expecting camera operators, and if we called it um, if we called a live album, you'd be ex- you wouldn't be expecting one of the discs to be a field recording. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd be this is some bullshit. <laughs> That's what I'd be saying. So, uh, but you say official bootleg? I know exactly what I'm getting because uh, I own plenty of official bootlegs, mostly from Dream Theater, as we talked about. <laughs> That's right. And and I bought my fair share of official bootlegs from across the ocean that have liner notes that were clearly printed with an inkjet and a DVD oh, no, these, with like yeah, these are better a than purple. That. Oh, they're way better than that. <laughs> but important for us to note for some of our more discerning CD purchasers, these are indeed. Hey, uh, I saw me in there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was pretty fun. Um, manufactured ourselves. Tim, you could maybe get into the specifics of the technicalities a little bit better, but the dreaded CDR. Right. It's a, so it's a pro made CDR comes cellophane wrapped and all that, you know, with with the insert and full color artwork and uh, all that on everything, including, including I dropped the DVD, but whatever the, (laughs) the, see, that's the one I don't like. So, but like even the, even the Blu-ray yeah. know, has, a, has a full color printing, but yeah, Bonus it technically, photo is, technically is a CDR. They care very, very much in Europe about whether something's a CD or a CDR. So you've been warned there will yep. not be CDs pressed. Um, Caveat emptor. This is the version that we made. Go enjoy it if you want. And especially if you're at the show, if you're at the show, write me and I will buy yours for you at cost. I like that. That's, uh, that's uh, there you go. <laughs> um, will you pay shipping too? Cause that's the big one. <laughs> if you, uh, mm. so the, the, the old tradition in the fish scene is blanks and postage. So I will provide the music, the DVD, but you pay the postage and let me know what your address is. There we go. That's fair. <laughs> so, um, what the hell were we talking about? Yeah, CDRs. So, oh, so, yeah, CDRs. so yeah, there was a, a quick story. There was a uh, there was a guy in Germany who kept going like, "Oh, you didn't send me a CD. This is a CDR." I was like, "Oh, right. let me let me send you another one. I'm sorry." And because I we sent him another a, one. We had a couple of albums where we had two different pressings. We done. had both. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I must have grabbed the wrong one. So I sent him another one. And, uh, you know, and it takes forever to, for the CDs to get there. It gets there and he goes, uh, you, this is another CDR. What the fuck is wrong with you, basically? 
And I was like, what the hell is he talking about? And I went back and I opened a bunch of them. I was like, fuck, he's right. So I like wrote <laughs> huge on the box. These are CDRs. Do not send. Oh, no. You know, these are the press CDs. Use these. So uh, the CDRs of that, it was Truth and Legend, our most recent mm. al- full length album, unless you count uh, the uh, Beneath the Ruins. Beneath the Ruins. <laughs> Yeah. Right. So, um, well, I don't know. I would say that Steel Diplomacy, uh, the official bootleg series, might count as our most recent full length albums. Oh, good point. Good point. They're full sets. Uh, speaking of sets, did we talk about sets on this this attempt? I don't think we did. <laughs> Who knows? If, <laughs> so, if you've heard this before, <laughs> fast forward this portion of the podcast. Yeah. So the sets are um, we had a uh, like a festival set which was all like the we have to play these songs these are these songs uh so the fest sets are uh similar um and and i was i was annoyed when iced earth did this on festivals of the wicked the two yeah. fests are like the same the same the exact same set but just one yeah. of them has an extra song <laughs> you know um yeah this is a little different uh they both start out with a different song so uh, we did Oathbreaker at in Germany and Day of Darkness in Athens, and then the rest of the set is Southwind to Ruin and Divide, Black in the Sky, The Gray Company, Sworn to Victory, and Supernatural Warfare. So uh, Black in the Sky and The Gray Company were off the um, the uh, Beneath the Ruins release that we did for Raphchild Records. He he invited us over there. Uh, to do these shows and he uh to quote dave quoting raf he said bring new music so he did so we brought new music <laughs> so uh, bring merch germans love to buy merch he said so we brought merch and in case you haven't heard it on this pass <laughs> oh our poor merch our poor merch that got lost by dhl yeah that's not the only thing uh dhl fucking lost either they we sent hundreds of cds home yeah and oh those never made it that's right those never made it so i had to buy extra ones uh these are this is beneath the ruins the cds never made it home uh because those were pressed in europe and we met up with them <laughs> so, right thank you dhl so then we had a bunch of other shows that were not fests and so we had uh some more songs so uh those include monuments of rust Mm -hmm. and the last one to fall both in oldenburg those are also field recordings and then we had from the stars uh in nuremberg and that was a multi-track recording so i brought all the stuff to do multi-track recording at every show and uh, it worked for one show it worked long enough for one song at one show so, um, others, uh, yeah. other songs we did that did not get recorded, uh, properly are, uh, <clears throat> we did new dawn arise and we did, that's right. Yeah. We did uh second sun. I think those were both in Nuremberg cause we had the yeah. longest set there, I believe. Right. Oh, was that, uh, let me check the set list in Nuremberg. Oh yeah, I forgot. That's yeah. Easy. We opened with we opened with Second Sun into Southwind, then Ruin and Divide, ah, uh, then Intravirus. So that's off Gathered Darkness. Do. Yeah. So you, I forgot to put all the set lists uh, that we could find in here. What is Sword? Sword. That must be Sworn. That must be Sworn, and sworn I wrote Sword. Victory. Yeah, that's not a secret song you don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> all right tim we gotta write a song called something sword <laughs> okay i'm into it all right um i don't know i'm i i think that this is very well represented on on the video um like you get a very good idea of what it was like to be on that tour with us um i do kind of wish we had a little bit more footage from from nuremberg and oldenburg but of the songs that we got, I think those performances were definitely the highlights of those sets. Yeah, so... Uh, shit, did we talk about it this time or last time? Uh, Getting to Europe the first day. 
that must have been last. Pretty time. sure that was the the last iteration. Yeah. All right. So, uh, that first show, which which is the Oldenburg show, which has the uh some of the the bonus tracks on the DVD mm-hmm. slash Blu-ray uh slash bonus bonus audio commentary as well. Yeah. Uh, were interesting because. Oh, we didn't talk about the audio commentary, did we? No, we'll get to, we'll get to that. Shit. So we'll get there. Um, so Christopher and I had uh, the other guitarist, uh, the lead guitarist. I should address him by his proper title. That other guy. Yeah, because he's he's doing more work on guitar than I am. So, <laughs> uh, we flew into Amsterdam. Uh, yeah, even though our first show wasn't near Hamburg, we flew into Amsterdam uh, the day before because it was cheaper. And right. uh, I got to explore the city, got some Thai food. Uh, uh, I, I got the hotel to give me uh, to put a picture of Flory Hansen over my head, oh, over my bed. <laughs> you know, because they give you the special right. request. I forgot about that. Yeah, so, so yeah. I did that. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we were... We were like somewhat caught up on sleep and stuff by the time everyone else arrived. <laughs> so yes, they all yeah, we, we, fly in in the morning the next day, and, the day of oh the show. God. And I think and you I were had, seeing fish the night before, right? I was seeing fish the night before, right? I had driven home from Pittsburgh to DC at like six in the morning, then gotten on a plane in Baltimore at four o'clock that afternoon to fly over to Germany, land in Amsterdam, meet up with Tim and Christopher and Tom and Aaron, get our breakfast beer, uh, beers in the train station, morning, morning beers in the train station as is tradition. And then I guess as, as Tim reminded me over our last pass, I slept the entire train ride. (laughs) Yeah. And I think there's uh, photos of you, uh, Sleeping. Oh, there's definitely. Uh, uh, yeah. So there's a uh, on the on the video discs. There's a uh, there's a slideshow and a what I call a 360 degrees slideshow. So I know there's people sleeping in there. So um, yeah. The and we should probably warn people about the 360 degree slideshow. Uh, there's a warning before it starts. So oh, oh, what okay. it is is I had a small spherical camera. That I brought with me, <laughs> um, I for, I forget who makes it. Um, it's it's over there. I've I have since gotten a higher quality one, but so I had all these spherical pictures. So I just I figured out how to uh, pan around the spherical picture in the uh, in the video software. So I put together a slideshow where it's just spinning at a constant, constant. rate for eight yep. minutes throughout the duration of the slideshow. And there's there's some good stuff in there. The scenery changes, but the spin continues. It's very disorienting. Traffic running a few behind. Well, that's good for us. That's right. (laughs) We're recording another episode after this episode. (laughs) Um, So then uh, there's, there's a, your standard slideshow as well as a, as a bonus feature right. and then there is the behind the scenes which the vast majority of is your pocket gopro <laughs> oh my god yeah that was a great idea in theory and it worked at times in execution it took a while to uh edit down the footage into something yeah. interesting because uh there yeah. was hours upon hours upon hours of footage um yeah but there's stuff the like our they... encounter with the kitty in uh, in Athens. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I mean, look, so I was always taught when filming to film more than you need if you have the film to, yep. to handle. I, it. I don't disagree. So, thank you for sifting through all of the hours of walking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was lots of walk. I tried speeding up the walking, but it, it was... Uh, Makes you know, nauseous. T- too much um yeah and then of course there's the audio commentary so we did audio commentary dave and i did oh, yeah. uh over as the second audio track over both fests and all three 
extra songs and and we were drinking so we were yeah so if you i i'm worried to compare the beginning of the first fest we recorded versus the end of the uh the last bonus track but oh, we'll see that someday i uh i haven't actually rewatched this since receiving my copy of Steel Diplomacy, the official Burning Shadows bootleg. Well, like every I think release, I'm some time when I get back. Like every release I've worked on, I've watched it too many times, and I need to step right. back for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man! So, but I, I will say, doing all of the audio commentary it was just a wonderful uh, opportunity to reminisce about this. This tour was so much fun. It was the culmination of so much work that you have been putting into this band for so long and like a culmination of one of my life dreams to get to Europe, to Germany specifically to play this music. Uh, It was a really wonderful time. And I'm glad that we have this commemoration of it, especially for anybody who wishes they was there. They were there who was not able to go. Yeah. And uh, we want to do it again. So maybe this won't be the last one. (laughs) Hopefully not. So, Bandcamp. We only put this on Bandcamp. Uh that was that was a decision. Um that uh we wanted to we didn't want to clutter up, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, the, some of the the release things with the same track which we've we've been guilty of many times. So y- you know, if we put this out and you went and searched Southwind, for example, uh, there would now be four different Southwinds you could hear. Didn't want that. Want it Bandcamp exclusive, and you can get all just the audio. You can get the just the audio on Bandcamp, or you can get this whole disc package. Um, you can only get all the discs. That was that was a pricing decision, <laughs> um, just to make everything simple and cheap. For everyone involved, <laughs> that's that's uh, why it's the four disc thing. So yeah, y- you get everything. There's no middle ground, all or nothing. <laughs> there we are. Very extreme. That's a very metal position to take. Yeah, and I forget if uh, we mentioned this this time or not, but uh, you had been talking about uh, the lies <laughs> that are like Blind Guardian live CDs. They oh just, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not what happened one night, which is what we have. It yes. was the best recordings of the best shows mm-hmm. stitched together into one. You said an interesting set list, something like that. Yeah, like an interesting and plausible set list. Like, yeah, I went. I actually have to look this up because I don't know what the track list of the last live Blind Guardian record is. But is that live beyond the spheres? I think y- yes, and unless you're counting like the audio rip of their Vakken World Wide, it sounds I can Vakken Worldwide uh, performance that they did during the uh, COVID nineteen pandemic. Oh yeah, but like it's a plausible set list. You know, they close with something like Valhalla. All right, here here is. Live Beyond the Spheres, three discs, set list. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Ninth Wave, Banished from Sanctuary, Nightfall, Prophecies, Tantalor, and The Last Candle, and then there was Silence, The Lord of the Rings, Fly, Bright Eyes, Lost in the Twilight Hall, Imagine from the Imaginations from the Other Side, Into the Storm, Twilight of the Gods, sorry, Twilight of the Gods, A Past and Future Secret, and the Story Ends... <gasps> Sacred Worlds, The Bard Song in the Forest, Valhalla, Wheel of Time, Majesty, and Mirror, Mirror. Okay, so there's no way in hell Blind Guardian is ever going to play that set. Right. That's what, like three and a half hours of music or something? Uh, it is. Uh, it's more than two and a half hours. More than two. Okay. Unlikely that they would play that set. Unless they're at, like, the God, please, to actually happen, Blind Guardian Open Air Part 2. I want it. Play Nightfall in its entirety, and then do a second set of whatever you want, 
Blind, blind Guardian, Hanzi, Andre, if you're listening, just do it. We will come. Um, that's a ridiculous amount of music for them to play in a given night. I believed it right up until like Imaginations. That would be their closer and then maybe like Mirror Mirror and something else for the encore. But then like Into the Storm, they're never going to play Into the Storm 12 songs into their set. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and so uh, on the but they were uh, opening, they were opening with the ninth wave on that tour. So it's like it makes sense at that time that they released it. And sorry, sorry to cut you off. Oh, it's but fine. it's it's not it's not an actual live show. It's a lot of live songs that sound really good and it has the energy of those really great tracks. But it's not a thing that you can put on and listen to all the way through and feel like you were there. Yeah. So the um the live the other live album they put out. Not live in Tokyo, the other one. <laughs> the um, one called Live. Oh, live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that one, like they're uh they're in Italy and he goes like Buona Sierra Milano, and then later you hear them going, Ole, 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 because they're uh-huh. in South America. Like it's it's a manufactured show. So Yeah. And that's and, what and I think he actually he speaks German on some of those tracks too. Yeah. If so I'm that's, not mistaken. You know, that's Blind Guardian's way of making a live album. Ours, you, you know, was, with this bootleg, it's, uh, mm-hmm. here's two nights that happened and, uh, tons of behind the scenes. The behind the scenes was, uh, fun to, fun to make. And, uh, oh, yeah. and I, uh, I, I was able to edit it down to something interesting. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, uh, is that it? That might be it. Oh, that might be it. While I was uh, while I was digging through stuff, I did find something. This is our n- not. This is not the first Burning Shadows DVD release. This is that's that's very true. <laughs> Ten years of battle is that Ten correct? Ten years of battle. I I have it right here, and uh, I'm considering and r- more. ripping this image and uh, making it <laughs> uh, making it available again. But I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Why not? Do do we not still have copies of it? We might somewhere. <laughs> we might. Oh um, man, I love I that's a great that's a great DVD. That's a little slice of time right there. Yeah, uh, is there anything that's on this DVD that's on that one? The new one. There's two songs, Supernatural and Oathbreaker. That's it. Yeah. All Otherwise right. they don't that's, overlap. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Well, is Second Son is Second Son on Ten Years of Battle? Yes, but it's uh, it did not make it onto Steel Diplomacy. True, true. Yeah, so I was wondering how much more room for overlap there was. So yeah, so very little. <laughs> Which is good. I'm glad that we have two snapshots of where we were, <clears throat> basically ten years apart from each other. Yeah, hopefully the next one won't be another ten years. It'll be our next European tour. So, uh, yeah, well, we got to shut our mouths and get back to writing some songs before we go back to Europe. <laughs> so, That's right. We have, have many music. songs half written. That is our, <laughs> that if you're wondering what the status of, uh, the band is right now, that's, that's the status. We're we about have, halfway there. We have, <laughs> we're half, you know how like Winter Sun keeps going, well, we have four albums written and we're just recording them all. We have probably three albums half written. Yeah. And naturally they, they don't overlap. So there is a, there is a plan for releases, but we just need to see which one gets done first. <laughs> so, Yeah. I think it's going to look like it's, I think you're right. I think it's going to be the random cool metal non-connected songs that get finished first. Yeah. I think you're yeah. right, because uh, yeah. concept oh, albums especially. are hard to do. <laughs> yeah, they are. All right, do you have and any the unconnected words? ones? Well, the unconnected ones are sounding so good. Closing words, closing words relevant to Steel Diplomacy. Is it available on SteelResolve.com? It is not, but this shirt is. <laughs> Actually, the uh, st- the Steel Diplomacy tour shirt is on SteelResolve.com. The uh, the music is only on burningshadows.bandcamp.com and there's a link in the description if I remember to put it there. <laughs> I feel like that has oh, that has to be the uh, the caveat that's always put on. Okay, until next time Metal Nation! Hi Doug. 
Keep it. No, I meant keep it I meant. metal. <laughs> I gave it two ears. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you know what we just did, Matt? We re-recorded the Steel Diplomacy episode. <laughs> Wait, why? Why? <laughs> well, you'll just have to listen to find out. That's bullshit, man.